the Beretta M9A1 and the 92A1. Two similarly named pistols, but with vastly different features. And this is everything you need to know. What's up YouTube? Thanks for stopping by. I am the Average Doomsday Prepper Nude. So today we're going to be going over two of my favorite Beretta pistol platforms, the M9A1 and the 92A1, and going over what those differences are, because while the names are very similar and very confusing on which is which, the features on the two are actually vastly different. So let me give you a little bit of history about the two pistols so you can kind of see how the evolution of both pistols came about. The M9A1 is an evolution of the M9, which was the U.S. Armed Forces sidearm from around the mid-80s to 2019. Uh, but after around two decades worth of use, uh, they wanted to kind of modernize and upgrade the pistols. And so they asked Broda to put on a rail, uh, checkering, and a beveled magwell. And that's what became the M9A1. So the evolution of the 92A1 is actually very, very interesting. It could be considered the second generation of the 90-2 line of pistols, which came out in the early 2000s. Uh, it was actually very, very different than anything Beretta had done previously. It was kind of space age looking. They, they redesigned all the contours of the pistol, as well as actually did some upgrades to the frame and the slide itself, uh, making it a very, very different platform of pistol than the standard 92 platform. So the 90-2 actually was kind of ahead of its time. It actually was very, very modular uh, in its grip design. It actually had a grip module that slipped over the frame. It didn't have grip panels like the 92A1 or the standard 92s. Uh, so it had a slim grip module and a fatter grip module that uh, was kind of like what they're doing now. Then instead of, you know, they're replacing the whole frames, uh, they were actually just replacing the whole grip area uh, to accommodate larger or smaller hands. Other big design changes that carried over from the 90-2 to the 92A1 was that it was actually completely redesigned from the ground up to handle 40 Smith & Wesson. The frame and slide are actually a little bit beefier than the M9A1 and the, you know, regular 92 series pistols. They added an integrated uh, internal buffer um, which you'll see when I do my side-by-side -side comparisons, but the uh, the frame and slide because they're they're beefier uh, It's not beefy like a Brigadier. I actually like the weight balance a little bit better on the 92A1s I actually compete with the 92A1s in uh, USPSA production Okay, so when we're comparing the different frame profiles of the 92A1 versus the M9A1, you can see that the trigger guard is rounded on the 92A1 with an undercut on the frame, whereas the M9A1 is squared with no undercut. And that's actually what the 92X and Wilson Combat uh, models are based off of, is they say they have a 92A1 frame profile, and this is what they're referring to. So there's actually three differences to a 92A1 versus a regular M9A1 slide. And the first one is pretty obvious. The 92A1 actually has a dovetail front sight, whereas the M9A1 has a fixed front sight. And that's actually because the slide on an M9A1 actually is a 92FS slide. When they did their modifications to the pistol or upgrades to the pistols, uh, they only changed the frame profile. They didn't change anything about the slide. So the next difference you can see on the 92A1 slide on the right is that it's got a little bit beefier front end cap than the 92FS slide on the left. You can kind of see that there. And that'll actually uh, be going up against the internal frame buffer that I'm going to show you later on. The other difference you can kind of see on the 92A1 is that the sidewall profile is a little bit thicker than the 92FS slide. Uh, it's not thick like a Brigadier, but it actually is thicker. Uh, you can kind of see that, and I think that actually gives it a better, a little bit better weight balance. Are you ready? Yep. Stand by.
So one other thing to note about the uppers and not necessarily the slides themselves is that the 92 FS M9A1 slide takes a standard uh, recoil spring and uh, recoil rod, whereas the 90-2 and 92A1 actually take a captured guide rod. So this is my 92A1 slide and my M9A1 frame. Because of the front end dust cover cap uh, is bigger on the 92A1, it actually will not fit into an M9A1 or any other 92 series pistol. It will only fit on a 90-2 or 92A1. And we'll get into the frame differences now and you'll see why. So when looking at the internals of the frame side by side, the 92A1 you can see has an internal buffer, whereas the M9A1 does not. This is a carryover feature from the 90-2 series. And along with that, you'll notice that the front of the dust covers, this has a wider gap mouth on the 92A1 than the M9A1, which is why the slide on the 92A1 does not fit onto the M9A1. So let's do the reverse and put a 92FS slide onto a 92A1 frame. It will fit because the front end of the slide is smaller than the 92A1. Let's go ahead and safety check the pistol because I'm going to be looking down the barrel of it. Um, you can see that the front end of the dust cover has a bigger gap because the slide on the M9A1 or the 92FS is smaller than the front end of the 92A1 slide. The next thing you can see is that the 92A1 does not have checkering like the M9A1 does on both the front and back of the frame. So from the factory, the magwell on the M9A1 is flared, whereas from the factory, the 92A1 is not, but I've gone ahead and flared my magwell anyway for competitive shooting. So another thing you'll notice about the 92A1 and the M9 grip profiles is that they are the same. They do take the same grips. In this case, I have Wilson Combat G10 grips and some VZ golf ball grips on them. Uh, after the 90-2 evolved into the 92A1, they returned the grip profile back to a standard uh, 92 style frame versus that modular uh, grip profile that the 90-2 had. So since the M9A1 has the grip check ring, the flared magwell, and the light rail, it's actually the most popular frame for people to franken gun, and is actually what the Wilson Combat Brigadier Tactical, uh, the Langdon LTT, uh, the 92 GSD, all of those pistols were basically built off of the M9A1 frame. So for example, if I were to just take a regular Brigadier slide, that will fit onto my M9A1 frame, and I basically now have built a Wilson Combat, you know, Brigadier Tactical or 92 GSD. It now has dovetailed front sights as well as other cool features. So yeah, the M9A1 frame is a cool frame to Franken gun. So to further my point about why the M9A1 frame is so cool to Franken gun, I have a Langdon LTT Elite Slide, which is basically a Vertex slide with front cocking serrations, and it fits on a M9A1 frame, which is basically what the Langdon LTT pistol is. It's an M9A1 frame with a vertex slide that has front cocking serrations. So one final thing to note about both pistols is that they both take aftermarket accessories from all manufacturers. Uh, you'll see on my 92A1, which is my competition pistol, it has Wilson Combat accessories plus the 92X trigger kit plus sights. And my M9A1 also has Inox parts, hammer, upgraded mag release. So aftermarket accessories will work with both pistols, even though the frame and slides themselves are a little bit different. All right, so that's everything you need to know about the M9A1 versus the 92A1 and their differences. And if you haven't already, please take the time to like and subscribe as I'll be having more of these videos in the future, as well as I have plenty of other Beretta do-it-yourself content in the playlist below or on the sides. Also, please feel free to make a comment below to tell me what you found most useful about these videos and what you'd like to see in the future. With the coronavirus pandemic going on, please stay home and stay safe. And until next time, see you then.